Transformations of functions is a very important topic in algebra and in pre-calculus. It, prov it provides us one method of graphing all functions. Um, and we first start out with a basic function, which I call f of x, and I, and I label that as our toolkit function, our basic function. And since Algebra 2 is the study of functions, you're going to have many of these toolkit functions to look at. But the beauty is you only have, there's only one way you need to learn to graph all of these functions. Um, g of x is going to be the transformed function, and that is the, the way we change f of x. I'm going to call it g of x. And understanding functional notation is important to, um, to recognize how really g of x is going to be uh, a transformation of f of x, a change. And these changes are called parameters. A, B, C, and D are the parameters. And each parameter has a function. And you, you really have to recognize the different ways or the different functions of these parameters. The first parameter we'll look at is the A value. And the A value, is, which will be a number, is, um, is going to dilate the graph vertically or flip it over the x-axis or both. So let me demonstrate that. If this is my function here, right now the blue graph is going to be the the toolkit and right now they're both the same since a b c and d but what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the a value down here to be one I'm going to change it to a different number and notice as I make the a value bigger it's going to dilate the graph or stretch the graph or shrink the graph depending on what it is in this case now it's point two the original graph is my toolkit graph um, has been uh, has been shrunk. Now watch what happens when it's negative. When it's negative, it flips it over the x-axis, and also notice it's doing two things: it's flipping over the x-axis and stretching it. So a stretches vertically or flips. Uh, what does the b value do? So let's get to the b value. The b value, since it's also a multiplier, notice that a and b are both multiplying. One is multiplying on the outside of the function, and one is multiplying on the inside of the function. And b is going to do the same thing that a does, but it's going to do it in a horizontal direction and also flip. So let's get to the b value. I'm going to get a back to its original, back to 1, so that it is going to be the same as the toolkit. And what I'm going to do now is affect b. Now, b is going to do the opposite of what you think. When a is 2, it stretches or by a multiple of 2. Here, watch what happens when b becomes 2. When I bring b to 2, it's going to shrink it. Um, and when I make b a number between 0 and 1, it's going to stretch it. Um, and notice also that when it's negative, it's going to flip it over the y-axis. So those are the two functions of b. Let's get b back to its original, back to 1, to show you what c and d do. c is also on the inside attached to x. So what it's really going to do, it's not going to stretch. It's going to, the graph is going to maintain its same shape. It's just going to shift the graph left or right. So let me demonstrate that. Uh, taking the um, C value, notice that X minus is going to shift it to the right, X minus 2. In this case, the C value is the number that follows the subtraction sign. So in this case, C is 2. It's shifted it to the right. And when I make C negative 2, X minus be X plus, it shifts it to the left. Let's get it back to 0. And then the last parameter is the D parameter. And basically the D is going to do the similar thing that C does. It's not going to change the shape of the graph. It's just going to shift the graph up or down. So let me demonstrate that. As D becomes, um, it's right now 0. Now I made it 1, so it shifted it up 1. And making it negative 1 shifts it down. So these four parameters affect not just this function. They affect all functions exactly the same way. And that's the beauty of this. You'll only learn, you, you need one to learn one graphing technique to graph all functions. Now let's get more specific. Let's see how these graphs, these uh, parameters affect each graph specifically. A and D, I call y effectors. They're outside the function, they're going to affect the y values. In exactly the same way you think. In the case of the A value, since it's going to stretch, what we're going to do is take, these, these are the ordered pairs for the original toolkit. We're just going to, whatever A is, we're going to multiply the Y values of the original members of the toolkit. We're going to just multiply it by whatever A is. Now, in the, the graph that we're showing you, the toolkit graph that I'm showing you, it has four key points. Zero, zero, sorry, three. Zero, zero, two, two, and four, zero. 
these are the key points for the original toolkit and let me show you 0 0 2 2 and 4 0 now what does A do? A does like I said before A does two things it stretches and it flips vertically so if I allow A to be 2 in this case my three instead of, instead of graphing these three ordered pairs I take the A value of 2 and I double the Y values and these are the three ordered pairs that I'm going to graph and then make it look like a half circle let me show you I'm going to let A be 2 now I want to might I might go off screen on this so I'll just pull it down so you can see A is 2 and my new ordered pairs are going to be 0 0 2 4 instead of 2 2 and 4 0 that's how you calculate the ordered pairs now I'm going to allow the a value to be one half and when I allow the a value to be one half it's going to do exactly the same thing that 2 did instead of doubling these y values it's going to cut these y values in half so 0 0 remains the same but 2 gets cut in half to be 1 let me demonstrate that I'm going to allow the a value to be 1 half and notice now the order to 0 0 ordered pair is going to make whoops is going to stay the same get there to be 1 half so 0 0 2 1 and then 4 0 so that we shrunk this thing the last thing we can do is allow the a value to be a negative value and it's going to do the same thing that 2 and 1 half did except that I'm going to multiply these y values now by negative 1 since a is negative 1 and you'll see the new ordered pairs the graph really essentially allowing a to be negative 1 it just flips it over the x-axis so here I'm going to whoops I'm going to allow a to be negative 1 right there and notice it becomes a full circle now 2, 2 is the original ordered pair. It becomes 2, negative 2, and these, these ordered pairs remain the same. Now let's take a look at the, C, uh, the D value. And basically D shifts up and down, so to be more specific, the numbers that are affected in our toolkit are going to be, we're going to add D to these Y values. So if the D value is 2, for example, the X values for the original toolkit remain unchanged. We're just going to add 2 to 0. 2 to 2 and back and you'll see that these are they're going to be the new ordered pairs so let's back here let's make our a value back to 1 so we get the original toolkit and we're going to allow D to be 2 and notice now instead of being 0 0 it's 0 2 instead of being 2 2 it's 2 4 and instead of being 4, 0, it's 4, 2. We just shifted the graph to, and by doing that, we were really adding 2 to the y values of this original toolkit. And if I allow d to be negative 2, it's going to shift the graph down 2, and what that does really to our key points of our toolkit is just we're going to subtract 2 from these. So if this demonstrate on the graph, I'm going to allow d to be negative 2, and you can see that basically what we did is we just set a 0, 0, it's 0, negative 2. We just subtracted 2 from the y values of the original toolkit. So that's a little more specific look at what, what happens with A and D. We have y effectors, and now we also have x effectors. Now our x effectors are the b and the c value, and this is where a lot of kids make mistakes. Be careful. Uh, the x effectors do the opposite of what you think they would do. Let me demonstrate. If the B value is 2, it's going to cut the, the X values really in half. Instead of uh, expanding like you think it would horizontally, it really is going to condense it. Let me demonstrate that. If I allow the B value to be 2, first of all, it's going to cut it in half. Let me get my original toolkit points up there so you can see what I'm, what I'm doing. These are the original key points for the toolkit. And what I'm telling you now is that what's going to happen is the original graph, these x values now are going to be affected and they're all going to be cut in half. Let me show you. Let me get my d value back to 0. And so the red graph and the blue graph are one and the same. And I'm going to allow b to be 2. 
Now what I th would think if I allow b to be 2 that it would make the graph wider, but it does the opposite of what you think. It's going to take these x values now and cut them in half. And so instead of being zero, it's at 0, 0, but instead of being at 4, 0, it's at 2, 0. Instead of it being at 2, 2, it's going to be at 1, 2. So the x values really get cut in half. So if it, the b value is 2, it's 1 over the b value, 1 half. And you have all these. Now, if the b value is 1 half, it's going to stretch. 1 over 1 half is 2. So all the x values now are going to be doubled instead of being at 0, 0. It's going to still be at 0, 0, but it's going to be at 4, 2 instead of 2, 2, and 8, 0. Let me demonstrate. Um, I'm going to allow the b value now to be 1 half. Now you can't see that graph, so let me pull it in so you can see it. And now notice the b value is 1 half. It does the opposite of what you think it would do. Instead, you, in most cases, most people would think that this would shrink the original toolkit, but it doesn't. It expands it. So being at 4, 0, it's now at 8, 0. Instead of being at 2, 2, we doubled it. It's at 4, 2. And notice the y values aren't affected at all. So here's a case where the b value does the opposite of what you think. Same with the, the c value. But before I get into the c value, let me just show you um, what happens when the b value is negative. Well, in the case when the, y, when the a value is negative, it flipped over the x-axis. When the b value is negative, in this case, negative 1, it's going to multiply all these values here by negative 1, so these signs become negative. So let's go and show you what that looks like. The b value being a negative 1. Move that over a little bit so you can see the transformation. And the b value now being at negative 1. Whoops. Negative 1. Let's get there. There's a negative 1. Let me pull it in so you can see it. And basically what happens is all these signs, instead of being at 2, 2, the x value be changes to the opposite sign, negative 2, 2. And so this basically flips the graph over the, over the y-axis. Now let's demonstrate the c value and how it also does the opposite of what you think it would do. Let me show you. Basically, we like the d value. This time, we're going to the c value is an x effector, but we're not going to multiply. We're going to add whatever the c value is to the x values of the original toolkit. Let's make the c value 2. And when c is 2, let me shift this up here so I can squeeze it into the screen. When c is 2, the original x values are going to be, 2 is going to be added to them. So 2 added to 0, 2 added to 2, and 2 added to 4. So let's show you what that looks like. Let's get back to the b value being 1. And let's make the c value 2. Now to make it 2, notice it's x minus 2. x minus you think that it would be moved to the, to the left, but it has been moved to the right. Let me demonstrate the ordered pairs by shifting this graph into the screen. So the original ordered pairs, notice it's x minus. The c value is 2. c value is the number that follows the subtraction sign. Since 2 follows it, that's the c value. So we're going to add 2 to 0 to get 2, 0 instead of 0, 0. Uh, instead of being 2, 2, we're adding 2 to get 4, 2. Instead of being at 4, 0, we're going to add 2 to 4 to make it 6, 0. So that's where the ordered pairs come from. And if I um, allow c to be negative 2, it's going to shift the graph to the left. And so we're going to add negative 2 to these x values to get these x values. And let's take a look at what that does. So I'm going to allow c to be negative 2. Shift this over so you can see it. And here it is at negative 2. Notice it's x minus a negative 2. In an actual problem, this would be written as x plus 2. So the c value really is negative 2, and it's been shifted to the left. That's what the x effectors do. So the x effectors are b and c. All right, let's put this all together. Um, in most cases, you're not going to be giving just one parameter. You're going to be giving them all. 
and or three or maybe two out of the four parameters. And this is what we have. I call this a mapping. X, Y represent the ordered pairs of your toolkit, whatever they are. And then this is what A, B, C, and D do to these these original points. For example, our original toolkit is f of x, and it's that little half circle. I want you to sketch a graph of this. How do we do it um, without the computer? So first we have the graph. We know it's a half circle. We want to find out what's happening to the three original points. First, what I tell kids to do, well, let's establish what a, b, c, and d are. In this case, a, b, a is negative 2. And what's that going to do? And when I think about this, I think a is, uh, it's 2. It's going to stretch the graph vertically and then flip it. The b value is 1 half. Now, most kids would think that it's going to uh, shrink the graph by 1 half. I know that the graph is going to be stretched horizontally. And then I know the graph, since c is 1, notice it follows um, a subtraction sign. It's going to be moved to the right 1 and then up 3. Now, let's show you what that looks like. Instead of... Um, Starting from scratch, we start with these three key points. These are the three key points of our original toolkit. And now we're going to try to find where these points are now. That's the, that is the purpose of this whole exercise. Um, since the B value is um, 1 half, 1 over 1 half is 2. And the C value is 1, so I put 1 here. And now the D value is 3, and the A value is negative 2. What I always tell kids is that A and D do exactly what you think they're going to do, and B and C do the opposite of what you think they would do. Now, how do I get the ordered pairs? Basically, what I do is I take 0, 2, and 4, and one at a time, I plug it in here. And what I get is I get the new ordered pairs. Instead of being x at 0, now we're going to start at 1. We're going to take 2 and double it and then add 1. That basically stretches it, and then 4. Now let me show you how the how it's doubled. Here the gap is 2 in each of these cases. Now the gap between 1 and 5 is 4 and and so on. And now to get the y values, I want to put 0, 2, and, and 0 into this. And my new y values are going to be here. And now what I'm going to do to sketch the graph of this function that was the goal, I'm going to plot these, these points and then I'm going to connect them with a half circle. And what it looks like is this. This is the original toolkit, and this is what happens happens to these three points, 1, 2, and 3. Notice it's at 1, 3, and that's what we came up with in our sketch, 1, 3. It's going to be the, the high point, instead of being at 2, 2, it's going to be at 5, negative 1. And notice that is what it, we came up with, 5, negative 1, and so on. And now uh, you can we can we can transform that. If I want to graph a natural log, which you don't know what that is yet, I'm not. I, all I need to know, uh, first notice that A, B, C, and D are the same as the, this problem. All I need to know is what the key points are. First of all, when we take away the parameters, we're left with our f of x as being this toolkit, and you can't graph this function unless you know the key points for the natural log. So in summary. The, uh, the transformations of functions provides one way of graphing all functions. So what you need to study then, or what you need to get used to, is first this technique, and then you need to know what are the key points for the graph that, of the toolkit graph, because I know how A, B, C, and D are going to affect it.